Ah, making a video. Draft science video. Um, sort of getting to the little philosophy of science, I suppose. Um, it might end up there. Um, really want to talk about uh, electricity a little. So we'll see if it'll be two separate videos. See how it goes. So anyway, Hoffa Day made this video called the Mendham Physics, right? A new kind of science exposing the cheats, blah, blah, blah. A uh, bunch of Feynman quote mining. Um, in, the, in the sense of where Feynman's actually admitting, you know, the, the science is undercooked. I could also quote mine him in his more arrogant, you know, moments. <laughs> you know, where the statement basically was, don't bother thinking about causes. Just do the math. Um, you know, because us smart people can't figure it out. You won't be able to figure it out. Uh, that kind of thing. It's just the way it is kind of rhetoric. So, you know, it doesn't go too far um, quoting historical characters, in my opinion. Not, not a great thing to to have to deal with, um, you know, argue the argument kind of a thing, not the arguers, not the messengers and all that kind of crap. Um, but, you know, I can say that, but just, <laughs> it doesn't change anything. No one's going to obey these rules. Um, anyway, so then he makes a, a second video that's kind of related. I mean, word fascist arguing uh, semantics. Where I'm supposed to believe I committed a crime, I'm committing a crime if I say the word anarchy should mean something, like the word nigger or the word limey even. So, <laughs> you know, if I say the uh, great limey, um, you know, or, um, I, you know, if I just take, take some sort of word that has a meaning and I sit there and just pervert it entirely, you know, call it like, I have a plan for dry, I mean, wet deserts. Yeah, let's wetify the deserts. Or, you know, let's create wet deserts or some some kind of just complete lie. It's like calling yourself a freedom fighter when you're really fighting to oppress the masses or something. It's just, you know, it's just a lie. It's not just semantics. It's important what words mean. And, and to call it word fascism, you know, because, oh, we have language and the language really only works if we have some sort of common understanding of wet isn't dry yeah can we do that please hot isn't cold can, can we please do that is that asking too fucking much um yeah and and just because you know the word cheat came up in this you know science is cheating well politics cheats by breaking words anarcho-capitalists all, all these these people are using the word anarchy to imply they are for a kind of freedom when they're really for a kind of oppression. It's a lie. It's a cheat. It doesn't describe the philosophy. So why should anybody indulge in conversation based on that as a premise? It's okay. Let's have a conversation about wet deserts. You know, desert, de desert, wet, wet desert vacation. Like it means something, like it's some so, sort of idea that's feasible or practical. Cold fusion. Yeah, let's have a conversation about that. Or let's not. Let's not fucking play with words. How about that? How, how about that being the first rule? That you don't get to use some symbolism and escape, <laughs> you know, obligations. So anyway, getting it back to the science thing. So, um, you know, so so he, he makes a video in Mendham Physics, right? And barely mentions in Mendham Physics, and he basically just says, "Well, go ask in Mendham," uh, you know. Which you know, like I, said, I, I, you know, it's not that I'm pleading for more meaningful endorsements, but I mean, what's the point of saying yes? I think you're onto something that basically does this unification thing that's been hunted for for a hundred years um, when you're going to do it in this kind of backhanded way. I mean, no one's really going to get what you're saying, which is, oh, bent space is a silly concept just invented as a contrivancy to explain something it doesn't explain. It's basically just saying, look at the, it's the it happened in the rubber band uh, dimension. It's a, it's a, it's an escape of accountability for actually answering a question, right? So, 
instead of saying it harsher like that, that we've been given answers that aren't answers. Okay, um, see, see, Einstein could have come up with, so this is what Einstein's explaining, okay? Mm -hmm. This, the this, this fact that this hand is small, and I go half the distance and it gets four times bigger, that's, that's bent space. So you just think of the space, and my hand is pushing it, okay? And so you can, you know, so it's just a different way of looking at it, but that's all. So instead of explaining this, Einstein just tied rubber to it and said, there, I compressed something. So you could call it thick space, or you could call it hot space, or you could call it something else. But see, if he kept it in this reality, if he kept it thick or thin or, you know, some kind of word you actually knew, then he'd have the, the liabilities of the fact that it wouldn't quite work. By putting in another dimension, by taking something not a thing, space-time, then he can make it do just one thing. And he has no obligations to explain how it does any of it. So there's no explanation of the actual energy, the actual mechanism. There's just this, you know, analogy to something in the real world. And this in this fake world, it's able to do it in ways that don't make any sense, like three-dimensional bends in space and so forth and whatnot. And then that all just becomes math. And then, you know, I've, I've already done videos on this, and again, it's just like, you're just redundant. You know, no one responds to anything. You know, I respond to other people's videos, but nobody responds to anything I say, or refutes it in any way. But mathematics is just a definition of a relationship. You can't touch relationships. <laughs> you, you can't, they're not, they're, they, they exist as real things. It's just that you there's no way you can touch it. You can't touch the fact that the light bulb's light is less dense, you know, uh, that, that it spreads out as it goes away from the light. Uh, this effect, you can't touch the effect. You, you, but the, the effect is certainly real and it certainly has explanation. So, um, but that's all mathematics is doing. It's just recognizing relationships. The relationship between, well, you, you walk a certain speed. In a certain amount of time, you will travel a certain amount of distance. That relationship exists. It can be mathematically put in an equation as a, as a real thing. But you can't touch it. It's a relationship. It's not a, you know, I don't know how to say it. Um, um, but it's real in the sense that it's accurate. It accurately quantifies events. It describes them sometimes completely. And sometimes math does it very incompletely. So you can have a, a, a formula that only works in certain conditions. And then you have to have premises. And you have to establish those premises for the formula to be accurate. Um, it's conditional. Uh, or it's dependent on some other um, element being true. Um, you know, and the more elaborate the formula can get, the more it can take into account all the different variables and um, become better and better at describing reality. Um, but it's not a model, in the true sense of the word. It's not, uh, um, it's not telling you what is creating relationship. It's it's defining relationship. So all of Einstein's formulas, none of them are none of them are bent space. They're they're just this. That's, that's all they are. They're just this. <clears throat> um, no, but we have to exist with this lie that somehow there is something besides just identifying relationships. The relationship between velocity and, uh, say, time dilation. It's a relationship. The cause of the relationship. You know, when we ask that question, is, is, is it really a good enough answer to say, well, I have this fake dimension and I bend it in proportion to your velocity. And the amount of bending is how much the time has been distorted. <laughs> you know, 
Or can't I just equally just argue that there's a relationship between your the function of your hardware and that velocity requires your hardware to change to do something else, move, i.e., and that moving distracts it from its function by the amount that would be that bending space. That's the relationship. It's the same relationship. Which description is real? So that's sort of what I think Hathaday has realized, is that this material description is far preferable to the immaterial, phony description provided by what that, conventional physics, whatever you want to call that, the, the accepted religion of fake dimensions with fake properties um, that are just conveniently suitable to what they're attempting to describe. They, they don't have to have any other features. They don't have any reality, so you don't have any of the consequences of having to explain how they interact with all the other stuff in reality. Um, so, <clears throat> anyway, so, so the idea is, is um, you know, I wrote down the words because why, right? Because when you're kids, you play that because why game. And it, it seems like a kid's game, but in a way, it's a, it's a serious game. Because if we took it seriously, we'd realize that our answers are wanting. That you get to a point where somebody says, because God says so, or because that's the way God made it. And you get to some stupid answer to the question. And if you actually took the game seriously, you'd get to that point where you say, gee, I don't have the answer for that. Good, good, good question. And the because why should either be something like, why is there something rather than nothing? I mean, that's ultimately where you're going to end up. <laughs> you know, what, what made this something? You know, you're, so that's always going to be a tough one. You're going to get into some kind of trouble by the time you get there, but you're going to have no clue. Um, no clue to how to answer the question besides saying something like, well, because it, mistakes happen. <laughs> yeah, the universe is imperfect, so yeah, it made errors, called something. Uh, it had this perfect nothing thing going, and it broke. The nothing broke because, yeah, it isn't perfectly nothing. Anyway, something like that. Um, but the rest of it, now you have, I can give you, I can provide you with answers that are going to be simple, like because uh, gravitons move the speed of light. Uh, because that's as fast as they can roll. They can't go any faster. They can't get from here to there any quicker than that. Um, you know, some sort of hard answer um, that'll come down to just a few properties that these things have because, well, because it's shaped this way instead of this way. You know, something really obvious. It's a square, not a circle. You know, some kind of everything will come down to some sort of hard answer rather than this mush that we're given as answers. And I think you can do that kind of dissection of almost everything. And so this is probably a more valid game and it should probably be, maybe there should be a show called Because Why <laughs> and you where people are challenged to take it um, as deep as it can go with some sort of real answer besides saying something silly like space is bent. Space bends and tells something, the nothing tells the something what to do. I mean that's on its face not a very good answer. Um, Alright, um, so let's see. Wait if I have anything in the notes I haven't covered here. Um, something force, I don't know what I was saying there, compared to something else real. Yeah, so that's the trick, is to compare things, to make analogies to real things. Um, but when you make analogies to fake dimensions, that's when it gets, that's when you're in trouble. The analogy should be tied to real things, not abstractions of real things. You know, distortions of real things. Um, so yeah, it's a cheat, it's a short changed, it's uncooked, it's not good enough, um, 
let's see, um, you know, you want, like I said, the, the, it's just creating some, it's like God, that, oh, why does God exist? Well, because God made God, you know, God's Father made God, like, you know, just gravity, making gravity is not a good answer. Um, all right, so let's see if I should get to my other stuff, or shall I go more with this argument about words? Yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it at that, because no one pays attention anyway, so there's no real point. But I just, you know, I'm just going to call foul on Hoffa Day for saying somehow I'm wrong for saying I'm not going to, I'm not going to engage in conversation, serious conversation about serious things with people too silly okay just too silly to even pay any attention to what words really mean I mean they're so into their propaganda they're so lost in their truth or nonsense that they can't even accurately describe they can't even accurately title the book the title of the book is such a preposterous lie anarcho-capitalism or whatever it's such a fucking lie all right, that why would I engage in a conversation about the content of the book if the author can't honestly title the book, should I really have a conversation with the author? Shall I take this philosophy th seriously when it's so preposterously, inaccurately dis defined, described, uh, titled? No, I don't think so. And I think anybody who does take conversation with period people who are ov obviously lying, I mean, it's like a truther. It's, it's like you can have this conversation with a truther, but as soon as they bring up something you know has been proven that they're wrong, okay, where you've already demonstrated with evidence how that lie doesn't work anymore, okay, that that lie is a lie, and then they use that argument again. You know that their dishonesty is complete, and that there's no conversation to have because they're going to constantly cheat. They have no respect for the truth. And what I'm saying to anarcho-capitalists or these the anarcho-communists or whatever they are, this anarchy crap, I'm saying to them, you're such an obsessive lying cheater that, yeah, I'm not going to have a conversation about anything serious with you because you don't take the truth seriously. You don't give a fuck about the truth. And I want to argue about what the right answer is, not your answer, because your answer has nothing to do with what's right. It obviously has something to do with what you want and you don't care how much truth you compromise to get it. Yeah, I think that's... But yeah, fuck the implication that I'm committing a crime by saying the word anarchy. It has a solid definition. And it's... There's just... It's like reclamating nigger. It's insanely, futilely stupid thing to be playing with. Just goddamn stupid. You cannot say, I'm for goodness and, and, and uh, civilization and, um, you know, clean streets or something, but I'm for anarchy. There's none of that shit is anything anarchy could ever fart. And you're just lying to pretend that anarchy makes good people. No fucking way. <laughs> you know, or it makes it possible for people to get along. Like you can, it's, it's, it's like you, you could just you could just show over and over again. You know, film of the crowd of people. You know, showing up to buy the Cabbage Patch dolls at the store or something on opening day or whatever, and watch them, you know, basically murder each other to get through the door. And you could just say, yeah, well, that's anarchy. So why should I have a conversation about anarchy doing anything constructive? All right, maybe I'll just, yeah, maybe I'll do the electric video separate. Yeah. Some time. I had, like, an allergy or something. I don't know what I got. <laughs> Jeez, I'm dragging today. Uh, yeah. Till next video.